Hello, Year 11s. Um, so unfortunately, today's lesson didn't work out quite as I planned, um, but that's okay. Um, stuff like this happens every once in a while. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do in this video here is basically go through the few questions that I was going to, I was planning on going through um, during class, um, and hopefully just walk you through um, a few more questions on finding points of intersection. Um, with yes. So let's have a look at uh, the screen. Hopefully you, it's on the video and it's showing up unlike uh, today's lesson. Now on the screen I have written down, um, so finding points of intersection um, and from the videos that I posted up earlier, uh, if you remember finding, points of finding a point of intersection is the same as solving simultaneous equations. So um, what we had when we were solving simultaneous equations was we had x is equal to a value. So if x is equal to one and y is equal to two, when we're finding a point of intersection, what that translates to is basically that just translates, ooh, ooh, still technical issues. Um, that just translates, this x is equal to one, y is equal to two, translates to a coordinate, a point on the Cartesian plane where these two, gra or two graphs will line up. Now I have an additional note that I wanna add here. So when you're solving simultaneous equations, that is the same as just equating two functions. That's the same as equating two functions together. And we'll see that a little bit later when we do those examples where you do this, use the substitution method in particular. Uh, basically what you're doing is you're equating two functions and seeing where they are the same at a well, given time. When you're finding a point of intersection, you're trying to find where two functions um, touch each other. And so that's where they're the same. So we're equating them. So let's have a go at a few of these questions I have prepared. So first question, I'm just gonna move this a little bit. Ooh. There we go. Okay, so the first question that I have here is f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x, uh, and you want to solve the following things graphically. So you want to solve when f of x is equal to 0 and f of x is equal to 3. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually draw, because it's asking me to solve this graphically, when I'm asked to do something graphically, that means I need to draw a graph or picture to show what it looks like. I'm going to draw this, uh, figure out how, what f of x, so my function f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x. I'm going to find out what that looks like. And last term, we actually did a bit of work on graphing quadratics. I'm going to go through it quite quickly, just so that we can get to the nitty gritty of finding points of intersection. First thing that I notice is that the coefficient of the x squared term is one, which is greater than zero. So this is concave up. So the parabola is going to be phasing upwards like that. The second thing I know is that I'm going to find uh, I'm just going to factorize it because this is, if you notice, it's quite easy to factorize it. I can take out an x term from both of them. So I've got x is equal to, uh, f of x is equal to x and x minus 2. Uh, and when I do that, this gives me the two x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts is that x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2. Okay, cool. Using that, I can actually find the vertex. So the vertex was when you took the average of the two, um, what's it called, the x-intercepts. That was the first method that we did last term when we used a factorizing method. So the vertex is going to have, if I take the average, so zero and two, the average is just gonna be the number in between, directly in between, which happens to be one, which is nice and easy. I substitute that back into my function and I end up getting negative one. So I have these three points here. I'm gonna graph it really nice and quickly here so that we can have a look at this. So the vertex, uh, I'm gonna make, so when I'm drawing this, I'm gonna do it um, quite uh, very evenly scaled so that um, we can actually see this, uh, what we're looking at here. So I'm gonna just put in every two, so we've got every two blocks, I'm gonna move across by one and I'm just gonna extend out my Cartesian plane a bit just because I want that look. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Negative one, negative two. Okay, cool. So when I'm drawing this, I've got my x-intercepts. I've got an x-intercept at zero and two. And I've got the vertex at one, negative one. I'm also gonna just put in negative one, negative two, one, two. Ooh, whoops, hang on. Let me go back a couple more. Just realize I made a mistake. Two, three, and I think that's fine. Fine, okay, cool. I've got my two x-intercepts. What, uh, zero and two. I've got my vertex at one, negative one. And so I'm just gonna draw on the graph here and hopefully this map lines up. Bam. There we go. And I think I'll go up to there. So there's my quadratic, uh, my function f of x is equal to x squared minus two x. 
Okay, cool. So that's my problem. Now, what the question asked me to do is find, solve graphically, f of x is equal to zero. What's doing here is basically going, well, if I have my graph y is equal to f of x, which is what I've drawn here, I want to equate that to the equation y is equal to zero. So I want to find where on my graph y is equal to zero. Now, y is equal to zero actually forms a horizontal line, which is this point here, because at this value here, every y value is zero. Along the x-axis, this is y is equal to zero, every point along the x-axis is where y is equal to zero. Um, and so when I'm solving for f of x is equal to zero, I'm just going to do i f of x is equal to zero. That's just me going, well, where does my graph, where does my quadratic touch this red line here, y is equal to zero? And so here for this one, what you'll notice is that those are the two x-intercepts. That's here and here. So we go, so uh, the points of intersection are just going to be those two points. So at 0, 0 and 2, 0. So here, when I'm equating it, my function to a particular number, I'm just going, where does this, my function touch the y line? Y is equal to 0 for this first example, for example, from here. So for this first example here, what f of x is equal to 0, we have the two points 0, 0 and 2, 0. Those are our two x-intercepts, which kind of makes sense to us. Okay, I'm going to do the next question. So part two was f of x is equal to three. Now what I'm going to do here is instead of drawing y is equal to zero, I'm going to draw y is equal to this here, three. So I'm going to go to where three is. So here, this three line, and I'm going to draw a line across. This is y is equal to three. And all I'm doing is I'm going, where does my line y is equal to three? Where does it touch my uh, quadratic function? Where does it touch the parabola? So here, what you'll notice is that you've got two points here. So you've got one at negative one, three, and you've got one at three, three. So here, negative one, three, and three, three. Now, both of these you could totally have solved using um, the algebraic method of just solving simultaneous equations. You could totally go, okay, the first one was I wanted to go f of x is equal to zero. Oh, hang on, I'll do it on the side just so we can see it. Uh, here we go. The first one here is f of x is equal to zero. So all I'm doing is I'm going x squared plus uh, minus 2x minus 2x is equal to zero. You can totally solve that and we've learned how to solve quadratic equations like this. And for the second one, same thing, x squared minus 2x, but instead of it equal to zero, I'm just equating that to equal to three. So this was f of x is equal to three. That's the algebraic method. But if you're trying to solve graphically, what you want to do is you're going, okay, cool. Where are my points of intersection? If I'm solving um, a quadratic, uh, solving this graphically, I'm going, where are my points of intersection? Where does it touch these particular lines? So that's this first example here. Um, this is question 1b. It should be in the questions in the booklet as well.